Hey guys, and welcome to a legendary scrap between two mighty warriors of legend. On the left hand side we have Rusty, and his opponent shall be Tank, and we're looking at one of the most dreadful and unbalanced matchups in the entire game, and that is Warriors of Chaos versus Vampire Counts. Now this has been widely and historically considered to be a pretty terrible matchup for the Warriors of Chaos. Now, you may be wondering why they have so much access to chaff clearing potential, a lot of cool infantry, big hard hitting monsters, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the vampire counts. Well, the main problem is their infantry gets burst down by mortis engines, they almost always lose the air game because they have worse flyers and worse flying lords, and in the beast department, though they do have some rather powerful foes like Kolek for example, the opponent has healing, whereas the chaos can't. So vampire counts tend to be able to outgrind the uh, warriors of chaos nine times out of ten. So we're going to have to see a bit of a different approach coming in today from Rusty, and he's up against one of the best vampire count players around, which of course is the mighty tank. So for the forces here of the Warriors of Chaos, we've actually gone for some uh, cheap Chaos Marauders in the back with great weapons, dotted all the way around in reserve and on the flanks, but the main battle line is going to be made up of some pretty elite and bad to the bones rock and roll units we have chosen with Halberds. So chosen with Halberds on the right, chosen with Halberds on the left, and sandwiched in between them is some basic chosen who are currently on a silver chevron. So these bad boys will be able to tear their way through an infinite amount of grave guards, skeleton warriors, zombies and so forth, and the Halberds will certainly be able to assist at taking down some of those larger creatures. In the central pocket leading the army with a Chaos Sorcerer of Fire coming with Fireball, Flaming Sword and Burning Head. And leading the army we have Prince Sigvald the Magnificent. Should be able to tank any of the Vampire Count Lords relatively effectively. Vampire Counts are very good character assassins and uh, Sigvald is one of those guys you don't really assassinate, at least not, uh, not in a speedy way. To counteract the counter, the uh, counteract the Count Mortis engine, oh my god, that's quite a mouthful there. We do have a Marauder Horse Masters. So we have one, two, three. A couple of these are horsemen, one is Horse Masters. And they have another three in the distance. So again, Max Skirmish Cavalry. And these ones over here, again, are a mixture of horsemen and horse masters. They are arguably the most important unit in this entire army. You see the flashy Chosen, you see the flashy Sigvold, the Sorcerer. Ignore all them. These horsemen have to kill the Mortis engine because nothing here is going to do it. Prince Sigvold, of course, one on one will be able to take on a Mortis Engine, but uh, the Mortis Engine is not exactly going to be sticking around. For the forces of the Counts, we do have the Dire Wolves as well as the Dire Pack hiding currently in the trees, backed up by Double Blood Knights. In the main fight, it's just an absolute fluster cluck of a formation. We have zombies mixed in with some skeleton warriors, uh, the Sternsmen as well, which are always a decent pick in basically every matchup. And apart from them, though, it's just a load of chaff. We do have double Crypt Horrors, which is quite an interesting pick. I haven't seen Crypt Horrors in action much at all. Uh, they do bring poison to the battlefield, which will help out quite a bit in draining down the enemy. We do have the standard Claw of Nagash, which is the Regiment Renown Mortis Engine, a must-have in this matchup for reasons we've already spoken about. We have a Necromancer, and we actually have Foot Heinrich Kemmler, which is a super chad move by Tank. I like this pick quite a bit. Uh, you don't get to see him very often, particularly on Foot. He's coming in with the Lord of the Undeath, able to summon Krell. We have Undeath Resurgence, Raised Dead, uh, Dance Macabre, and uh, Invocation Hex, all the good standard competitive stuff. Now, a big weakness, of course, for the Counts, uh, particularly in this build, is they don't have that much mobility. You have the Double Wolves uh, and the Blood Knights, but no Fell Bats or anything to really tie down the Horse Masters. So they kind of have free range, particularly if they can all gang up and jump the Dire Pack and force them off the field as quickly as possible. We have six Skirmish Cap, that is so many. And they're going to be bounding across the Snowy Plains to close the distance with their enemy. The rest of the Wars of Chaos simply going to sit back and vibe. There is no reason for them to push right now. Try to get as much value as possible from the Horsemen. It looks Looks like the Blood Knights have ventured out as well from the tree line, perhaps looking to try to ensnare these are horsemen by pinning them in with the wolves and then jumping upon them with the knights, which would be a really good solid idea. Horsemen are moving forward. Looks like they're going to just start poking down the Crypt Horrors, which I, you know, they only have 30 armor, so they'll do some pretty decent damage there. They, of course, they have the potential to get healed up quite nicely. We can see the wolves are on the move, trying to prowl and hunt down the horse masters, working in a pack, and uh, they are nearly there. Looks like they managed to get off a tiny bit of damage. But in return, the Dire Pack has taken a considerable, considerable amount as well. But anyway, all the Javelins and so forth that they take would, of course, mean that uh, that's less ammunition to be used on the Mortis Engine and other key targets, like the Blood Knights. We can see that the Marauders have moved in, looking to try to save the Horsemen from the Dire Pack if they get a little bit too close there. And the Horsemen are going to be falling back once more in those 360 no-scope Javelins. And the Wolves are actually suffering quite badly right now. 
We have an overcast fireball going down. Let's see what it's aimed at. I'm assuming it's aiming at this Necromancer, which it is indeed. And it does a bit of a connect. It was more kind of a parting shot there. And did a tiny bit of damage, but nothing too crazy. Dark Wolves are getting a little bit low, so they're going to be falling back to get healed up, no doubt, by Heinrich Kemmler himself. At least that's what I would do. And it looks like we do get an Undeath Resurgent just buffing their leadership to stop them crumbling. And we most likely get a hill going down on them in just a second. Although, is it worth it just for two die packs? We'll have to wait and see. Horsemen are now focusing down the Blood Knights. Another fantastic target for them. Yes, they have 110 armor and bronze shields. But damage is damage at the end of the day. And the Horsemen simply cannot be caught right now. So the Warriors of Chaos have had the entire game you know, going good for them so far. But that's certainly going to change once the Counts do close in and really do engage the enemy. Blood Knights just bounding around trying to hunt down the enemy knowing that they can indeed be held up in the later stages of the game and if the blood knights die that's fine there's not too many targets they're really good at but they need to keep that claw of nagash alive that is their main priority so one unit of blood knights does fall back uh, he's probably waiting to do a massive heal with these die wolves and now he's sending in the second unit just to absorb more damage before pulling back and healing once more Second fireball does go down, this time aiming at the Claw of Nagash, which is flammable. So doing some you know, pretty decent damage to it all round. Nothing too crazy out of the gate, though. Blood Knights have taken some damage, but it looks like the Vampire Counts once more shall be moving down to close the distance. Looks like they decided against the hill, so not 100% sure why he was baiting out on the damage with the Blood Knights. But I'm sure there's a hill going to be coming in in just a second. Horsemen, as well as the Horse Masters, do ensnare the enemy from both sides. And now we can see that Overcast Invocation of Heck going to mitigate the majority of the damage they did take. And now you can see the Horsemen and Horse Masters down to about half ammunition on this clump on the left. And the clump on the right have used up about a third. First building head is going to go down. It's basically impossible to dodge this with such an enclosed formation like this. Particularly when it's not overcast, so it moves as it wants. And it does some nice damage to the zombies, but nothing too insane to bonus. It missed the Sternsman. Tank didn't really have to dodge that one too much. Hydra Kemner's going to get singed a little bit, but he won't mind. We do have the Blood Knights moving forward with the die pack, and despite getting healed up, they try the Dance Macabre tactic to increase their speed uh, so they could close the distance on the Horsemen, but they're getting so heavily hammered right now. Die pack looks to be crumbling and off the battlefield. That's going to give even more mobility advantage to the Warriors of Chaos, knowing that there's not those anti large Warhounds on the prowl, because the other unit of Die Wolves, he can just jump them at any point if they do overextend. They're going to need to be escorted by the Blood Knights the majority of the time here. Counts being real slow and ponderous right now. I guess they're just trying to waste all this ammunition. They know that they have to uh, waste the ammo before the main fight does indeed engage. But there's no need for the Wars of Chaos to actually use this ammo if they don't want to. But despite this, I mean, hitting Blood Knights, yes, you can heal them. But you're still going to get them to their healing cap rather quickly. And it's getting some fantastic value from the Horsemen, despite maybe not being such a big win condition. Die Wolves are currently being focused down. Just trying to get away them the one of the fastest elements of this Counts build. And it looks like the Vampire Counts have had enough. Okay, we've been... You know, getting harassed, javelined all day long. We're not going to stand for this. We're going to push forward and rip your heads off your bodies. That's what you should do to people who harass you, by the way. Just pin that out there. So the Cryptoids are moving forward. Zombies moving forward as well. Blood Knights are just vibing on the right-hand side. Still taking a decent amount of damage. And the Chosen are happy. They finally get to their, get their axes a little bit wet with the blood of their enemies. Although the blood may be a little bit dry, considering it is the undead. The Chosen shall feast. We have one zombie coming forward. It looks like this was actually a summoned unit of zombies. Just trying to uh, pin the enemy in close a little bit, wear them down, and try to knock out the forces. The uh, Dive Wolves will be crumbling once more. They're just about stabilised at the moment, but they're basically done for. Prince Sigvald has decided to jump in for a bit of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Second Burning Head is going to go down the line. At this time, focus down some Skeleton Warriors, and it does not look like the Vampire Count player was ready for this. He does manage to dodge back with the second unit of Skeleton Spearmen, but that just eviscerated one unit completely down to the bone. So one Skeleton Warrior unit has been deleted, and the other does survive. Now, keeping your chaff alive is relatively key in the early stages, so the Claw of Nagash can get in there and really bring the paint. A majority of the horsemen are falling back behind friendly lines. Going to overwhelm the direwolves, move into combat and surround and put those mutts out of their misery. While the others force themselves forward and start aiming at the Cryptoras as well as the Claw of Nagash. In the front line, the Chosen are trying to hold back the tide. There are Cryptoras here, double units in fact, plus Heinrich Kemmler. That's going to be a tough scrap for the Chosen. But with 120 armour, they're going to hold for an absolute age. Particularly Stan or Die popped to them, increasing their melee defence to 90. Prince of Halberds have managed to surround the neck monster, a fantastic target for them, as the more swift moving marauders start to whip around the flanks, looking to surround and encase this vampire count build from all sides. 
There's a lovely little zombie, or uh, skeleton warrior, someone I should say, as well as Krell, going down on the horseman. And they have been forgotten a little bit here by the Wars of Chaos player. This unit has been forced off the field as they desperately try to drag down the Claw of Nagash. Luckily for them, the second group of forces have moved up to launch Javelin after Javelin and their enemy. Big Fat Bird and Head goes down the line, roasting many a zombie, which will certainly help clear out the chaff there. Halberds are trying their best, supported by the Chaos Marauders with great weapons to fend off the Blood Knights who have pushed through that front line. The Chosen just don't give a damn. They are surrounded by these Cryptors, but due to that massive melee defense, the Cryptors are really struggling to actually connect. The Horsemen have been forced back a little bit due to the summons on this right-hand flank. They can use this time to throw Javelins into the Blood Knights and start to wear them down. Pink Sigvold is in here doing some rather lovely damage himself, twirling that blade in a dance of death. And you can see the Crypt Horrors are actually running away from him at the moment. Cloth Nagash is getting healed up by a well-placed invocation of Nahek. And it is so far up to 15 kills. Chosen are starting to struggle down to about half HP, but they are fighting uh, relatively decent troops for the match to go up against. Kind of chaff as well as the Crypt Horrors, Blood Knights, trying to avoid the absolute fluster cluck we have got at the moment. Net Commander has spent a little bit too long amongst the Halberds, struggling to escape. He's been moving away and trying to leg it, but the Halberds don't really care. They're swirling those Halberds, poking it down, and the Net Commander doth fall. Crypt Horrors are starting to get a little bit low here. Blood Knights do a really nice rear charge into the Blood Knights, trying to water them down before falling back. Undeath Resurgence does go down to increase the leadership of all these troops. And this Claw of Nagash is starting to do some really lovely work. Let's see how much value it is actually up to. Just shy of 1,000. Horsemen have rotated all the way around. You can see that the Blood Knights are kind of engaged. The Dire Wolves have all died. So they move all the way around to get complete free reign. And to launch those Javelins into the Claw of Nagash. They are starting to run pretty thin on ammo though. Two units completely out actually charge in and just get deleted pretty much interest, uh, in instantly. And the Blood Knights do charge out as well. They're only under 8 kills, these guys. Blood Knights really haven't had a good time whatsoever. Chaos Morals are starting to enjoy the party, fighting alongside their more elite warriors. You could, the Chosen are being attacked continuously from the start of the battle. And they've only lost 5 models and up to 121 kills. Very impressed by the elite warriors of the Chaos. And this is going really well for the Warriors of Chaos. You can see Krell is actually getting killed by Prince Sigvold, which is very impressive. I've almost never seen Krell actually die. He is a summon, of course, so he kind of just disappears. Sigvold gave it to Krell, decapitated him, leaves his body unceremoniously dumped in the snow, and pushes on forward. Klovnagash is at its healing cap. We have just a couple of volleys left. Three volleys from one unit, two from another. Is it going to be enough to drag down the claw? Prince Sigvold does think so as he moves forward and instead of attacking the Klovnagash is going directly after the enemy leadership and Heinrich Kemmler. Klovnagash does crumple and it looks like Armin Losses is about to kick in as the old man flees before the beautiful and majestic Prince Sigvold who was just about to go in for a death stroke for Heinrich said, you know what, I'm not going to peace out of this one and run away to save myself and come back and fight another day. Awesome game by these two uh, champions. Very interesting game as well. Um, it's I don't know how to describe it in a total war term. Footballing term, it's kind of Tank was struggling to get the ball from underneath his feet. It's kind of where a lot of his units were tangled up amongst each other, which normally works relatively well for vampire counts. Although the burning heads were kind of, kind of a, a big punishment factor to that as well. But normally, you know, you get one or two burning heads. It's kind of expected for vampire counts. But you're still in such a dominant position by that point, it doesn't really matter. But he couldn't quite get his units in the right situations they wanted to be on. And that was largely due to Rusty's build, actually. The mass horsemen really punished him once they had won the mobility game. And I think one or two fell bats certainly would have helped out. But hey, that's uh, kind of the luck of the dice, you know, with with Total War Warhammer, you do a build and you're like, okay, I'm going to risk that my opponent isn't going to do something, for example, the Mass Cavalry, or I hope that my Double Blood Knights, Double Die Wolves are enough to fend off the Cavalry, maybe push them away with zombies, and uh, so I'm not going to overly invest myself in Fell Bats and other harass tools. Sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them, and this time it worked out rather well for Rusty, and I'm a big fan of this build in general. I think it's got a ton of potential coming in with those kind of elite chosen to beat down the majority of the Vampire Count infantry, and then you must win the mobility game. Otherwise, that Claw of Nagash will solo your army pretty much. But well played to Rusty, well played to Tank. Always a pleasure to see these guys fighting on the channel. Top two, top tier players here doing some really awesome work. I will go through the damage dealt and damage value of all of these units in just a second because I'm assuming some of it is pretty massive. But before we get to that point, if you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a big old fat thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel as well. We have some really cool goals we're aiming to reach at 7,500 subscribers. We've got a big live stream challenge I'm going to do and the same at 10,000 as well. 
Uh, there are oh, comment down below as well. What you for the battle? What do you think this matchup? I'm kind of interested to see what people think. Do you think this actually really counts favoured? Historically, 100% has been uh, by the majority of tournament players considered to be massively, massively vampire count favoured. But do you think that's changed over kind of like the years and always the chaos players coming up with new builds and so forth? So do you think this is unbalanced? Do you think it's a balanced matchup? I'd really love to hear your thoughts and opinions. I certainly think it's counts favoured, but not quite as uh, unwinnable maybe as it once was. There are links down below in the description. If you would like to support the channel, I have links down there, I think, to merch now, which is kind of cool. Hopefully, by this point, this video goes up, we have some merch available. We have a Patreon. We have a Discord. If you join the Discord, which, of course, is absolutely free, you can submit replays to the channel, get involved in tournaments and events I host and all that kind of cool stuff. But anyway, back to the interesting stuff and the reason we're here, the actual battle. The Chosen, 159 kills, 46 and 136 for the two Halberd units. Let's see how they stacked up damage value-wise. This unit was the bulk walk of this Warriors of Chaos build, just absorbing all that pressure. 1,266 damage value is good work. Over 1,000 as well from both the other Chosen, one of them getting 1,355. So all of the Chosen performing really, really well today. Of course, a Curse of the Midnight Wind. Not Curse of Midnight Wind. Oh no, what's it called? The big, the big Death Skull is what I'm going to call it now because I can't think of it what it is off the top of my head. Obviously, uh, Wind of Death, there we go. Wind of Death would really punish this quite a bit. But uh, Wind of Death is it's relatively popular. It's super expensive though. So for the ma majority of time, you're going to kind of see a uh, lineup like Tank Brought with the healing and one or two other healing, raised dead and maybe one more spell. Prince Sigvold, 1,000 damage value is basically full health at the end of the game, 49 kills. The Burning Heads were really quite well classed, uh, 214 kills, 23k damage dealt, 1,179 damage value. Really good work there by the Chaos Sorcerer. One thing for you players out there who are looking to make these spells work really well, what you want to do is threaten your opponent and force them to micro somewhere and, and then instantly cast the spell. For example, threaten with the Skirmish Cavalry, aim at the Blood Knight so they have to drop back and as your opponent, as you do that, you very quickly go to your Fire Sorcerer and drop the Burning Head spell and while your opponent is uh, dealing with the first threat, hopefully they will miss the second one. That's kind of how you can get these big shots going down. 214 kills is nice, and clearing out the chaff was relatively huge here, as again, chaff can be used to force away the horseman. Marauders did pretty decent. I mean, nothing too crazy. 965 is the best damage value they got. Apart from that, it's kind of in the mid-hundreds. Uh, we've gone over the Chosen. As for the Horseman, 935 damage value, 931, 822, 933 from the basic Horseman. It's some really good value, but the Horse Masters stand head and shoulders above the rest of the build. 1,396 damage value, 1,668. Masterful skirmish play there. As for the Force of Tank, Hunter Ken was a really cool choice. Only 95 value. He's more here for his summons and credit and so forth, but he unfortunately couldn't really get involved in the thick of it. Likewise, the Necromancer. So the leadership really struggled. If you can ever kill a Vampire Count Lord, 100% go for it because they really struggle without their leaders on the field. They don't have the greatest leadership, and of course, that will kick them off the Kremlin. Zombies, unfortunately, got roasted. Likewise, with the Spearmen, you can see this unit actually got zero value. is really bad from them. And the Sternsmen even struggled. 377 value. Just coming up against too many elite warriors in the form of the Chosen. Cryptorals were a cool choice. I don't see them very often. But uh, 200 damage value and 277, again, just running into that brick wall of Chosen and really struggling. Good use of the Blood Knights. I do like the idea of realising, oh crap, all right, my opponent's kind of got one over me uh, from the... The build selection, the build roulette. So I'm going to have to sacrifice some of my more elite units like these Blood Knights to uh, try to waste that ammunition. And it nearly worked. The Horseman only just had about enough to kill that Claw of Nagash. 715 and 220 damage value on them. And the Wolves have both struggled as well, mainly just absorbing damage. Claw of Nagash got 1.5k damage value and received a huge amount of damage from those Horsemen. If all the ammunition had been used on the Blood Knights... Maybe the Clovening Ash could have actually carried up against a relatively slow and ponderous build once the, ho the horsemen were taken out of the equation. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time, peace, peace, and as always, stay awesome.